This is the Roller Coaster Podcast, and I'm your host, Lucy Q. Life is a wild ride. It has twists and turns. It's scary, exciting, and downright fun. So throw your head back, arms in the air, and come along with me for the ride. Life is like a roller coaster, baby, baby. I wanna ride, ride, ride. Okay, before we get started, check out nectargrowth.com. N E C T U R E G R O W T H dot com. It's free to join, but not for long. Nectar is an extension of the roller coaster. It's where you can start your own journey of self-exploration and growth. In Nectar, you'll find different topics of interest, daily blogs, affirmations, journal prompts, and you can connect with some of the fantastic coaches that have been on the roller coaster. Soon, we'll be adding videos, meditations, live discussions, and events. Our signature course is a journey of self-improvement. And it's valued at $397. But once you join, it's available to you at no cost. So if you're feeling stuck, if you feel like you need to change and not sure where to start, start with Nectar Growth Network. Come join us. You know you're worth it. Now, let's get on with today's show. Understanding the true nature of our soul is said to be the root of our spiritual path. But what is our soul? And how do we connect with it? Joining me today is Scarlett Peretta of Scarlet Soul Cafe. And she's an intuitive medium and a manifestation coach. And today she's going to help bring clarity on some of these big questions. Hi, Scarlett. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be on your show. I'm a huge fan. I got to get that out there. And uh, I I love what you're doing. I love what you're representing. And I think it's something that your average person will understand. It it does, it, it, it appeals to just everyone. So thank you for what you do. Oh, I really appreciate that. That means a lot. So you're an intuitive medium. Is that something that you were, you grew up knew, knowing that you had those abilities or is this something that you sort of discovered later on in life? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. And uh, it, it's one of those things where, and I think this will resonate with, with probably yourself and our listeners out there. Um, we're, we're born with these abilities. You know, people say, oh, I have a gift. I don't have a gift. A gift implies I'm someone special. I am not someone special. I'm just your average gal, no different than anybody else. I have these abilities, obviously from birth, no different than anybody else is born with abilities. For some reason, I was chosen to do this. And uh, as a young girl, I had, I would see uh, spirit and, you know, and uh, often I would see them of course, in the evening, of course, it has to be at night, right? It would be, <laughs> it'd be just to freak you out a little bit more as you're learning about yourself. Um, and, and I would see, you know, spirit at the foot of my bed and, and it was unexplainable. You know, there were just things that were unexplainable. Um, you just kind of, you know, nobody knew that nobody knew to really talk about it. Nobody would talk about it. There was no schooling, you know, to do something like this. And if there were schools, they weren't well known. So you just kind of, push it to the side. And then I found afterwards, once I hit my 40s, and my kids were grown up, then I was really being called to do this, like spirit came to me at like, constantly, I would see them, I would hear them. And, 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 and then I knew that something was up and the universe just pulled me to do this. Like, it's just, it's crazy, because I went to school. I, you know, I was an, I'm an educated woman. And so these were strange things for me, right? It's like, no, 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 just put this aside. This is not, you know, uh, it's just not tangible. So how do I explain this? I can't explain it. Um, But the universe put me in, in a path and I haven't looked back since I was hanging out at one of my girlfriend's stores. Uh, She had this beautiful store out in Stouffville, Ontario. Um, It was called Moonflowers at the time. And her psychic didn't show up that day because she was not feeling well. And so she got the call and she was panicking. And she says, Scarlett, you're, you're psychic. I, I need you to stay. I need you to stay. And I said, I'm not psychic. Like, what do you think? <laughs> what am I going to do here? 
And she was so, you know, she was genuinely worried. I can't be open on a Saturday and not have a psychic here. And, uh, and so I said, okay, fine. I'll hang out. What, what's going to happen? Right. Nobody's going to show up. But lo and behold, I had about five readings that day. And during the week she called me and she said, Scarlett, I got to put you on the schedule. I have, it, it's like wildfire fire. People are asking for you and Lucy, the rest is history. <laughs> wow. Scarlett, you know, it's funny. You said that in your forties, after your kids had grown up, you were pulled to do that. And I can really relate because you know, the same thing happened to me in this part of my journey where um, I was in my mid forties when I basically hit sort of my own sort of personal crisis, rock bottom. And the result of that has led me to everything that I'm doing today. And it's, it is that magnetic force just pulling you and you're thinking, this is crazy. This is so far from anything that I've been before done before any of that it's completely different and it's it's almost like the universe has said okay now you finish being a mother to your children right now we need you to be a mother too dot 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 you know what that's a great way of putting it a mother too dot dot dot. i like that and when you said that you had hit rock bottom and that's when it happened and i giggled and i didn't want i didn't i'm not giggling at the fact that you hit rock bottom for that i'm deeply sorry for you know it's i i I, it resonated with me because i had hit rock bottom as well and then i noticed that when most people have these awakenings they face plant in life like that something happens that creates space for the awakening. I, I find it rather fascinating that it's just, it, there's so many common threads. Doesn't matter who we are, what we're doing. There's always this common thread of, of how we embark on these journeys. It's quite, quite fascinating. It is. And I found, I mean, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people Um that have been through that and the catalyst seems to be one day they realize that they've been living and I call it the dreaded checklist Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing that society says is going to make you happy and you take all these things off and then you know you hit 40 and you're like what in God's name am I doing I'm not happy I'm not me correct and and you articulated that so well. And I know that when you say that our listeners out there, it's going to resonate with them. What ends up happening is you're right. We're told to fit into a role. And when we're told to fit in a role, nobody is trying to do us harm, you know, like our parents, um, school friends, school, you know, work, everybody is moving us in a direction, you know, and the intentions are perfect. And that may take care of the physical world and the physical things around that world, you know, like supporting, you know, paying bills and things like that. I I like what you said where you were like, I'm not happy or wasn't happy. That's because your soul wasn't, wasn't being nourished. It wasn't, you weren't living your soulful purpose, you know, and we talk a lot about mindset. This is something that's very passionate for me. Because over the years of doing the readings, and I'm also a business coach as well. So I get the both, you know, that I get both sides of of the world um, of, of course, you know, reality and mindset is not enough because if mindset was enough, I don't know how many people are strong minded. I know that you yourself are strong-minded. We've had a bit of a conversation, you and I, and then our listeners out there are strong-minded. They're, they're, the mindset is strong. That's not the issue. Mindset is not enough. So really there's three other components that go along with mindset. So we've got mindset. And for the sake of just keeping it the same, I'm going to call it body set and then heart set and then soul set just to keep it all consistent. Right. But we've got the mindset and then we have the body set. If we're not taking care of our body, self-care, eating well, you know, our health is very difficult to, to do anything in life. And then, of course, heart set. I don't know about you, Lucy, but if I've met someone that's brokenhearted, they have a very difficult time succeeding at anything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Heart set is really important. You have to have peace in your life. And then last but not least is soul set. 
And I know that when I say that, a lot of people are going to scratch their head and say, well, what is the soul set? Because we've neglected our soul for, for I don't know how many years or how long, how many centuries uh, as human beings, we neglect it. And it's to the point that um, I, I meet a lot of people during my guidance readings and clarity readings, and, um, and, and, and they are, they're feeling so lost and off their path that they don't even know how to, I, I'm going to say this with respect, they don't even know how to breathe anymore. You know, I, it, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. And I think we've all been there. I know I've been there. You know, there's, you're content, you should be happy with everything that you've got in life. And yet something feels like it's missing. You feel like there's something more that you should be doing, you know? And that's why I like what you said about being the mother too, dot, 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 because that just really, really gives a beautiful, beautiful visual. And, you know, when, when we're busy on, on that hamster wheel of life, you know, we're busy, we're busy being moms. It's very difficult to tap into that energetic and intuitive side. You know, it's easier to stick into the physical world. And if you, if you pay close attention, you know, we, when we talk about mindset, body set, heart set, and then soul set, mindset and body set are the physical side. We do that really well in this world, in this realm. But when we look at the emotional set, like the heart set and the soul set, that's something that we tend to ignore. You know, we push forward regardless of what it is our emotions are trying to tell us. The emotions are short circuiting, you know, um, we're sitting in places where we don't feel good. We're spiraling down. I assure you, Lucy, when we're not feeling good and we're spiraling down or in a different direction that doesn't feel good, that's not your sole purpose. Your soul is meant to feel happy. You are meant to feel happy. And anything that is associated with a positive emotion, that is what we're built to do. If you're not feeling content, fulfilled, if you're feeling disheartened, disconnected, you know, um, angry, um, sad, depressed, anxiety, whatever it is that you want to label it, apprehensive, fear. This is not your soul. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. And that's a strong sign that you're not on your soul's path. You're not living your soul's purpose because your soul guides you in the direction of feeling content and whole and calm and happy you know, and it's almost like a compass, you know, like I, I start dating myself when I talk about a compass, it should be a GPS. I was going to say, no, no, no. I know what a compass is. Don't worry. I used to use them in girl guides. Um, <laughs> I can still read a mean compass if I need to. <laughs> that means you and I must be around the same age, my dear, you know, and yes. so, <laughs> a compass when, you know, I remember my dad taught me how to use a compass in the forest up, up North. We, we were always on adventures like that. And he, I remember him showing me that it will point north, right? Automatically, it didn't matter where you go, which way you turn that compass, it points north. And so because you know where north is, then you know which direction you need to take. Do you need to go south? Do you need to go east? Do you need to go west, right? So the compass will guide you. Well, our soul is the same thing. And, and instead it's, so our soul is our compass, intuition is our compass. Because the soul, intuition, it, what is intuition? Uh, in my world, intuition, those quiet whispers from your heart, that's your soul whispering to you. That's your soul telling you what you should be doing. So you're on the right path, right? But how many times do we listen to that? Well, not often. <laughs> and half the time, it doesn't make sense, right? Because it's like, what? That's not logical, right? So we kind of dismiss it and we allow logic to override. The soul is like our compass, right? Intuition is our compass. And then the emotions would be that direction of north, right? So if your emotions are yuck or negative feeling, you know you're going in the wrong direction. If your emotions are feeling content and comfortable and, and happy and whatever it is that you want to, you know, positive emotions you want to insert there, that is when you know that's the direction that you've got to go. I've had a few thoughts. Um, one, I think we're, I don't, I don't think anyone can deny that we're on the verge of a mental health crisis. Agreed. And it, in fact, I think we're in the midst of it and it's only going to get worse before it starts to get better. Okay. And in my opinion, I think that after being, th after going through it myself, I think that it comes from depression stems from not being in touch with your soul 
not being aligned with what you want to do. And, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about, you know, people are awakening, they're waking up in that. And it seems, I'm not sure how that term resonates with me. But I sort of equate it to, you know, people are realizing that they're living this checklist. Mm -hmm. This, 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 you know, people are realizing that they've been doing all of these things. Mm -hmm. But as you said, there's this missing piece. And the missing piece is engaging your soul. It's living your purpose. It's feeling Mm -hmm. that happiness. And it's not meant to say that every day you're hundred percent happy through every minute. It, it, it means that, you know, in general, you have happiness in your life so that when those challenges bubble up, mm-hmm. you have the foundation to deal with them. Exactly. And but if you're coming from that depressed depression state, or even, you know, the state just above depression, when you hit a challenge, it like things can completely fall apart. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. I like your spin on the awakening too. It's a realization. I like that um, because it is, you know, you're, you're waking up and it's a realization when you wake up. Like it's just, I, I really like that perspective and, and you're absolutely right. You know, it's so easy in, in today's society to get onto that hamster wheel of survival and you don't have a chance. Like how many of us can say that we wake up and then before we know it, you know, it's time to go to bed, like, where did the day go? And we're almost moving um, in a, in a way that's out of, out of body, because we have so many tasks that need to be done. We don't have time to feel, we don't have time to connect to our, our humanness, you know, Um, and emotions don't have a good rap in our society today. Nobody wants to see an emotional person. It's all about being, you know, um, calm and in, in control and in charge and things like that. And so we're starting to lose even the ability to understand what our emotions are. And, um, are they healthy? Are they not? I call it an emotional intelligence. You know, we need to have that cognitive intelligence, but we also have to have that emotional intelligence to understand how it is that we are reacting to anything in any particular moment? How are we reacting to someone else's behavior? How are we reacting emotionally to, uh, you know, a situation that may be stressful? You know, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that we have forgotten um, because it was kind of labeled as weak. You know, sometimes emotions are labeled as weak. It's they not- are. And emotions are associated with the female energy. And when we're talking about energy, it's not female and male. It's not, it's not like boy girl type of thing. It's that female energy is the emotional energy, but we've been forced into the masculine energy, which is no emotion. It's stiff upper lip. It's conquer all. And we're human beings. And by constantly engaging in that male energy, you're losing the balance. Yes. And, you know, that's creating a lot of problems because like you said, we do get stuck on the hamster wheel. I mean, certainly when, you know, when I had kids at home, it was like the alarm would go off and you'd be like, okay, I got to get up and I got to get my shit together. Cause then I got to make sure the kids are getting their stuff. And it's just like, you're, you're just like, meeting all of these like goal markers you're go 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 and then you you good you're just getting to work and you're making it through traffic and you're getting to work and you're making it through your day and then you're coming home mm-hmm. and then it's like i got to deal with dinner and what the kids are doing after school and and by the time you get to bed you're like as if i had any time to think anything differently correct you're you're absolutely right and and it's it's it, it's it, to me it's a little bit sad because these emotions are something that we've been gifted with, you know, they are, as I'm going to, I'm going to go back to it. It's our compass, you know, it's a measurement of, for lack of better, you know, explanation, it's a measurement of the direction that we're supposed to be going, you know, and, and I assure you, Lucy, because I read souls for a living. We each have come into this realm for a purpose with a purpose. And if you are doing or living a life that is not in alignment with your soul's purpose, you're going to have difficulty. You're going to be met with resistance after resistance after resistance. And when you're met with resistance, people usually get, you know, to your point about, you know, um, mental challenges being on the rise. 
you know, that's what ends up happening. There is a breakdown because our, our mind is needs rest. You know, it cannot be pushed to the limits that we're pushing it and then continuing to push it more without, you know, without some type of coping mechanisms, without some type of, of, um, compass to put us on the right path. And it is a very natural thing to have a bit of a mental breakdown, you know, be it whether it be a bad day or, you know, a, a deep depression and nobody is immune. Uh, nobody is immune to any mental challenges. I've seen. No, um, they're not. They're not. I've and- seen the strongest of people. I've seen myself, people that I thought would never, nobody is immune. No. And what's scary is that I'm finding younger and younger people like our sons, our sons are 19 and 22. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, the, the, our youngest Ethan, he came back here for the summer first part of the summer to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so he reconnected with some of his friends here and they were over one night and we had this conversation because they know what I do. So they kind of, after a couple of beers, they kind of gravitate towards me. We have a conversation mm-hmm. and I was, I was so, my heart hurt talking to them because here were three young adults that are supposed to be in the prime of their life. Mm-hmm. And all three of them were questioning, not my son, but his three of his friends were questioning mm-hmm. what was the purpose of life? Mm-hmm. Why are they even here? Right. And to hear that from a 19 year old, it's like, no, this, we need to start speaking louder about this. We need to do whatever we can to help people Correct. It's remember eye- their soul. Yes. It's eye opening, Lucy, you know, and when we see, uh, when we see, when we see that our youth today suffering like this, when they should be having the time of their life, you know, they don't have the responsibilities that they will be having when they're adults, you know, they should be having the time of their life, exploring who they are, having fun with that. And they're not, you know, so let me give a little bit of a solution to our listeners. How about we, we do a little bit of that? You know, when it comes to manifesting, it's not that difficult. Nobody really will give it to us with clarity. I want to give your listeners that with clarity. Okay. Because a lot of, a lot of um, what I do, I, I made a contract with my spirit guides that if I have to be doing this kind of work, then let me at least do something meaningful. You know, let me at least put people on their path. I don't need to see, you know, what they ate for lunch. I don't need to see, (laughs) you know, uh, what happened to them, what horrific things or goofy things happened to them last year. I need to be able to see what their soul is craving so that we can move them in the right direction. And here's, here's what I've observed over the years manifesting is about clarity. Okay. Clarity of vision. Now we always hear about that vision boards and stuff like that. That's not enough. We also must have clarity in thought and clarity in actions that we do. Okay. And then last but not least, we must have clarity in feeling. So if we are going to just, we're going to play. Okay. So let's say we want to be living on a yacht in a year from today. Okay. Which from my mouth to God's ears, let's hope that. Yeah. Happens. Amen. Can, can I have the yacht beside you? <laughs> the cast that we do is going to be on our yacht in a year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, you know what? None of that is impossible. We we're having a good immature giggle here. None of it is impossible. If we had clarity of vision, clarity of thought and action that would enable us to be able to do that. But here's the one common thread that people miss when they're manifesting and that's the feeling of it. Okay. Most of us now see we're, we're giggling because we're like, Oh my God, it's impossible to be on a yacht in a year, right? This is what automatically we start to think and we start to feel and guess what we create that the impossibility (laughs) got it right. Because we can feel that really well. Um, So we don't know what it feels like to sit on a yacht and and do a podcast and work from the yacht because we've never done it before. And this is where we have challenges when it comes to manifesting. Clarity vision, okay, I can create a vision board and I've got it right there. 
And clarity in action and in my thought, okay, I will weeble wobble throughout that, but I can even do that. But it's the feeling part of it. You know, how do I feel what it feels like to have wealth if I've never had wealth? How do I feel what it feels like to sit on a yacht with that kind of wealth if I've never had that kind of wealth? I'm using money because everybody can relate with money. Right. You can, you can insert whatever it is that is your most important wish. Okay. So now people say to me, how do I feel? And I can't do it. I can't do it. So I'm going to give everybody a fun task to do just in a moment. But before I get there, if you're having difficulty feeling how it feels like, think about a time where you felt really happy or you were applauded for something that feeling of elation. Now take that feeling and now attach it to that vision, to that visual of you sitting on the yacht. Okay. Now, if that's even difficult, because like, oh, that's impossible. It's impossible. Lucy, I want to play a game with you. Can we play a game? Absolutely. I want you to imagine that you're holding a tennis ball in your hand. Now I can see you. We have, I have the benefit of seeing you. Yeah. Not our listeners can't see, but I'm going to just for the sake of it, I'm going to assure everyone that Lucy is not holding a tennis ball. Nope. <laughs> so you've got it in your hand. Here's yeah. our hand. It's an imaginary tennis ball right in our hand. And you know what? I invite our listeners to do the same. Extend your hand out and picture this imaginary tennis ball in your hand. How does it feel? Tell me about the tennis ball that's in your hand. Well, it, it, it feels fuzzy. It's got some weight to it. It's not too heavy. I can feel that it's round. Ah, isn't that amazing? Yet you don't have a tennis ball in your hand. So how is it possible that you can feel that and you can explain with such clarity of vision and clarity of thought what that tennis ball is? Well, I've held a tennis ball before, so. And that's where it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Right. And so, but the thing is that I want to drive home because everybody can pretty much explain, like you said, I've held a tennis ball before, so I know what it feels like. So it's easy for me to have clarity of thought and vision when I'm carrying that imaginary tennis ball. But see, I've taken something that's untangible and I'm hoping to have made it tangible, not just for you, but for our listeners. And that my dear is how you manifest. And you're going to have good days doing it. You're going to have the days where I got this and it just, oh, my manifesting was beautiful. It was amazing. Perfect. Then you're going to have days, maybe even weeks where it feels impossible to do that. And I'm going to say to everybody, be gentle with yourselves and be compassionate with yourselves as you're learning this new way of doing things, that you are that powerful. We are energy. We are energetic beings in an energetic world. And so the universe will respond to us, but we just need to know how to do it. How does that sound? It's That's a great formula. And one of the things, I mean, I, I, I'm sitting, my, my desk is in a little nook here because I have a Cape Cod. So we have these, I don't know if you know what that type of house is. Right, right. So we have these dormers and my desk is in one. So I have these little angled walls either side of me. And that's where I have, I've got four different vision boards, mm -hmm. with like different things I'm working on or different ideas. Right. So if I'm looking at my one here, that's for say, you know, my business and my podcast in that, mm -hmm. you know, say, you know, I look at one of my pictures and it says 1 million subscribers. And it's like, I can sit there and I can, you know, feel the happiness right. and the excitement and the pride. Yes. But then I get this little thing going, okay, but how are you going to do it? <laughs> and that's the tricky part is that's where you have to learn to let go. <laughs> Correct. We have it's to this correct. let go and, and let God or let go and let the universe, whatever you want to yeah. frame it as is it's, know that it's out there for you to obtain mm -hmm. but you also have to have that faith and that self-belief yes you do you you really do and and this is where you, you see going back to our our um being on a yacht right now i couldn't tell you the first thing how am i going to do that could you i can't i'm not you know it, but it's a dream it's a beautiful dream right what's important is not the how what's important is where you want to go. It's no different than driving. You know, if I want to drive to, cause you, you and I are both in Canada, I'm in Ontario and you're out in Nova Scotia. And if I want to drive to you, I need to know where I am right now. And I need to know where I'm going. 
The how, well, I'll get there as long as I know where I'm going, right? I'll find the way to get there. And so it's the exact same thing when we're manifesting, you know, when we're, when we're dreaming about where we want to go, don't necessarily worry about the hot, the how, the how one step at a time will show up right in front of you. And that's when you need to, you know, you need to react. That's when you need to listen to those whispers of your soul. That's how you do it. One step at a time, you know, it's, um, it's not that tough, but it is. At the same yeah, it is. It is, but it isn't because you have to take those steps without necessarily knowing what the steps are after that. Correct. It's that it goes back to that analogy of your headlights. You can only see so far with your headlights, mm -hmm. but you don't just assume that the it. road disappears. You're right. You're <laughs> you have to get to a certain point before you can see the next 20 feet exactly. or whatever it is, is that you have to travel a certain distance before you can see the next leg of the journey. And right. sometimes, sometimes it can take, you know, a little time to get to that next leg. And sometimes it can take a hell of a long time. Absolutely. And You're it's patience. Right. It's patience. And I, like, I want patience, but I want it now. <laughs> I think most of us are. <laughs> but I like what you Seriously. said as well earlier. You, you talked about faith. Yeah. I think we, we underestimate the power of faith. I think we underestimate that, you know, faith is what carries us through so many times where we are not aware. And, you know, using your analogy with uh, the headlights, I love that analogy. I use it often myself. As a matter of fact, sometimes we're going to take a wrong turn. It's okay. Like on my travel, on my way to come and visit you from Ontario to Nova Scotia, I am going to make the wrong turns every so often. I will make it. I will still come there. I'll still make it there. That's life. You know, and each time we take a wrong turn, there is a valuable um, lesson. You know, there's there's an opportunity to heighten your awareness. You know, and that heightening of awareness during a wrong turn is what is what strengthens your ability to get where you're wanting to go. You, we need those life lessons in order to improve our skill set. You know, it's, um, it, it's, it, it, it's just, it's impossible to do it without. So you have to embrace even those wrong turns. Yeah. Because sometimes those wrong turns aren't actually wrong turns. Agreed. They're, I mean, they may suck in the moment. Exactly. But when you, you know, when you get back on course and you have the benefit of hindsight, mm -hmm. then you can go, well, if I didn't take that wrong turn, then I wouldn't have found that really cute farmer's market exactly <laughs> you know it's it, it's those things that okay yeah I, I took a wrong turn but, and another thing I tell myself all the time because I'm really good at like messing up driving instructions mm -hmm. if I'm driving somewhere even if I'm driving into town mm -hmm. like downtown Halifax I use my onboard GPS or whatever you want to call it because I'll get lost mm -hmm. I'm really good at oh, I'm I, please we won't even go there <laughs> I'm the same so now I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Listen, I, I totally. I, the, 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 benefit, the, the, the benefits of uh, being the, the hormones the of perimenopausal. Eh? <laughs> You're like, wait a second. I had a really good point. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a riot. That's a riot. Well, we were talking about GPSs, right? And yeah. the importance out. both you and I need Oh, the wrong turns. You got it, girl. <laughs> so sometimes... I get there eventually. See, you see, there's a wrong turn right there, and it made you, and you, you went right back on path. <laughs> but I mean, sometimes those wrong turns are because we're supposed to learn something. But I also, when I physically take a wrong turn, I also say, well, maybe I was supposed to take that wrong turn because it was preventing me from being in an accident down the road. I absolutely agree. I call it the universe is plotting to do you good. Yeah. Even, even though you're going through, you know, chaos, we'll call it chaos. There's always beauty in the chaos, uh, but you gotta be, you've gotta be in that, in that centeredness to see it, to comprehend it. Uh, because if you're, if you're not, if you're not having faith, if you're not trusting the universe, if you're not trusting that the universe is plotting to do you good, then you're, you're, you're going to spiral in, in the wrong direction. You know, the universe is always plotting to do you good. You gotta, we gotta remember that, you know, um, it, and there's always beauty in the chaos. It, it doesn't matter 
you know, it doesn't matter. I, I got to share a personal story because yes, it just please do. It's coming to mind. You know, several years ago, my dad um, had a had a, a heart attack, and uh, unbeknownst to us, because that guy is like the epitome of health. He's he's absolutely my idol. Like I, he still has better legs than I do, and he's obviously he's much older than I am, of course, and um, and he's still in great shape. Knock on wood. Um, so for him to have this heart attack, we were all shocked, right? It was like just something crazy. And my dad was in ICU. And so um, we were very fortunate that ICU was very kind to us because you're only allowed one person at a time. And the nurse snuck my mom in, myself and my sister in at the same time. And so we stood outside of the room and, uh, and we're looking at my dad in bed and my sister and I, like my dad, our dad is our hero. Like, you know, he's in, in, at this moment, he looked small in bed, right? Like you could see uh, he was uncomfortable. And there was my mom holding, and they were holding hands and they were looking at each other. I'm going to, I'm going to get a little emotional here. And in that moment, I nudged my sister and I said, I looked at her and I said, beauty in the chaos. In that moment, my sister and I had this aha moment with how incredible our parents are and that they are really best friends and that love, like you could just see it beaming. And we, we saw it, but not like that. Our parents were always worried about getting the family, taking care of things. You know, they're, they're very traditional, you know, in that sense where, um, you know, they, they're, they're our parents and then behind the scenes, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're best friends, right? But we had a glimpse of that in that moment. So, after, I mean, my dad's doing well. He is like super healthy today. Like nothing has ever happened. My mom is doing well. And that, that for us was such an aha moment for a number of reasons. You know, I, I believe that my dad in that moment had to show us that we needed to clean our act up when it came to health. We needed to, and just to see the beauty, to be able to see that kind of love and then to take that and bring that into our lives. That was a wrong turn that went really well. Yeah, that's a powerful story. So beautiful. Beauty in the chaos, but you gotta be willing to observe. You gotta be willing to be centered in that storm to be able to see and, and feel and understand. Scarlett, this has been such a wonderful conversation. And I know the listeners out there are going to want to connect with you. What is I, the best place for people to connect? I would be delighted to connect with your listeners. Uh, the best way uh, they can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Scarlett's Soul Cafe. Now, I'm one of those strange scarlets. I only have one T, um, but they can also email me through my website at scarlets-whispers.com. Well, if you're listening and you're looking at connecting with Scarlet, make sure you check out the show notes. I'm going to have all of the links in there. And Scarlet, thank you so much for joining me today. Lucy, thank you kindly for having me on. It was absolutely a delight to speak with you. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Want to chat or share your ideas about today's show? Pop me an email at hello at the rollercoasterpodcast.com. Don't forget to connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at the Roller Coaster Podcast. Our theme song, Roller Coaster, was performed by the Lucky Setback. Audio editing by the one and only Jeff Quigley of Quigley Creative. 